Now we're going to do a little bit of a research study. I've got my photoelectric timing cells that I use for research purposes, and we're going to skate 120 feet. So myself and Chris and Nolan are going to skate in, in two different ways. We're going to do it four different times. The first time we're going to skate with that, that long recover that we've talked about. And I'm going, to, I'm going to do it, and then Chris and Nolan are going to try to do it. They have a hard time doing it because they're, they're such good skaters. So we're going to see what the differences are between the time when we skate with a, with a narrow stride, bringing the skate all the way back into kind of that quote-unquote heel click, or bringing the skate back to the midline of the body. And then we're going to come back and time us when we skate with a wide stride. So we're going to do just kind of, you know, it's not, it's not the, the, the classic research study that we would be doing, but just to give you an idea of which one is faster and which one is slower. Then we're going to come back and we're going to, we're going to do the arm movement. So we're going to have one time where we all skate with our arms moving forward and backward, see what the time is, and then we're going to do it with our arms moving side to side, which is the normal skating movement. So we've got uh, our, our camera on us so you can see how we're skating and a camera on the time. So do you guys understand what to do? Okay. All right. I'm going to go first so these guys can see exactly how we're going to do it. We don't have to worry about the timers because they're photoelectric timers. So watch my skates, ladies and gentlemen, and see how close I am. And we're all going to skate as fast as we can, okay? Both ways with the feet narrow and feet, feet wide. Okay. So here we go. So I stopped the clock at 5.04 seconds. Okay, now we're going to watch with Chris. Now see, see the narrow stride that Chris has. See, he's bringing his skates up high and he's bringing his skates in. So Chris was 5.10. And now we're going to watch Nolan. So watch Nolan's skates. Watch how narrow, look at the narrow stride he has. Bringing his skates all the way in. Now he didn't skate all the way through, but still. He's 5.12. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to skate normal. <laughs> we're going to skate with the wide, typical wide stance, and we're going to see how fast we are and see what the difference is. Okay, guys, as fast as you can, one hand in your stick. Now just skate like you normally do, okay? Okay, we'll see what my time is. 4.75. So that's a little faster. Now let's watch Chris. See the difference in his skates? See how much more powerful he looks? 4.65. But the, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you see how much power, more powerful it looks when they're skating. Now doesn't that look more powerful with Nolan skating? And Nolan, Nolan was the fastest four. 0.42. As I said, it's not, you know, it's not, it, it probably wouldn't pass the, the rigorous standards for the research that we usually do, but it gives you a pretty objective evidence that that, that wider stride is a much faster way of skating than bringing your skates in, bringing your skates in. Now we're going to do the arm movement. So guys, now we're going to have the first time we're going to have the arms moving forward and back and we'll see how fast we are on this one. Straight forward and back, guys. Straight forward and back. Okay, see what I did here. Okay, so my time was 5.12. Now let's see what, Chris. Okay, now we gotta really make sure we're moving our arms straight forward and straight back. Okay, Chris, straight forward and straight back. That's it. Straight forward and straight back. Good work, man. See, Chris's time was 4.89. Now we'll watch what Nolan does. See, Nolan's still having a hard time moving his arms side to, or forward and back. He was 4.97. Now, let's have all of us skate in a normal way. The way a lead or fast skater skate Actually, the way that all three of us skate with our arm movement. So now, guys, just skate normal, okay? And we'll see if we're faster. We'll see if we're faster, okay? Okay. We'll see how I did. See if I was faster. 4.79. And 
Now Chris is gonna go, and we can just see what Chris is gonna do here. That's it, Chris, good work, man. Side to side, 4.73. And we'll see what Nolan does here. And we'll see if Nolan is faster. He certainly looks faster, doesn't he, ladies and gentlemen? 4.65. All right, now, let's analyze these times for myself, Chris, and Nolan. So when we skated with the narrow stride, bringing the skate back in, kind of that heel click that some power skating instructional programs talk about, I had a time of 5.04 seconds. Chris was 5.10, 5.10 seconds. Nolan was 5.12 seconds. Then when we came back and we skated regular, like hockey players do, you know, fast skaters, wide stride, quick recovery, well, I had a time of 4.75, 4.75. Chris was remarkable at 4.65, 4.65 seconds. And Nolan had a time of 4.42. So the, the differences between the narrow stride, bringing it in, and a normal wide stride, quick recovery, ranged from a quarter of a second to almost three quarters of a second. 0.25 seconds to 0.70 seconds. So clearly, ladies and gentlemen, clearly that wide stride, that, that regular movement of skating is faster. Now let's look at what we did when we had the arms moving forward and backward compared to the, a natural skating uh, movement of forward uh, arms going side to side. So when we were skating with the arms going straight forward and straight back, or at least when we were trying to do it, I had a time of 5.12. Chris had a time of 4.89, and Nolan had a time of 4.97. Then when we came back and had a natural movement, arms moving to the side, legs moving to the side, but primarily the arms, uh, I had a time of 4.79. Chris had a time of 4.73 and Nolan at a time of 4.65. So not as much difference, but we had a difference of the, when the arms move side to side, it was faster by 0.16 to 0.33 seconds. So 0.16 to more than a quarter of a second. More than a quarter of a second. A quarter of a second is the time between when you get the puck and you don't get the puck because you're not fast enough. It's the time where you score a goal and you don't score a goal because you're not fast enough. <laughs>